Now, I want to give you some tools that you can actually use on Monday morning. And so the first tool is what I call the Global Leader Pyramid. And I learned this the hard way. I, I've been uh, working with leaders, uh, including people like Nelson Mandela and, and people in the slums of Haiti, uh, and also Fortune 500 companies. And I made so many mistakes as a leader myself that I now can teach people to avoid those mistakes, OK? <laughs> I screwed up many, many times. And that's a, that's a good thing. So if, you, uh, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger, right? So I came back, and I can now teach you. So how does this work? The first level, if you want to get something done that's bigger than yourself, that is not just in your own self-interest, but something that's bigger than you, you have to start with self-awareness. You have to start with the bottom of the pyramid, the foundation, which is to check your own values, to actually see what do you believe in? What's important to you? For example, that's something that Hitler never did. Hitler never asked himself, why am I so pissed off with the world? You know, <laughs> what is it? I mean, why am I so impatient? Why do I hate people? Why do I hate the Jews, etc.? He never asked himself that question. That's the difference between Hitler and the rest of the, of, the, of the good leaders. Hitler started here at the vision level, but you have to actually be at these bottom levels as well. So self-awareness is where you check your own culture. And when I lived in India and worked in India about 20 years ago, I learned more about the Swiss culture. We talked about this yesterday. I learned a lot about my Swiss blind spots, my assumptions. I had assumptions like neutrality, discretion, you know, anonymous bank accounts, secret bank accounts. If you want to get one of those, talk to me later. <laughs> we, can, uh, we can make arrangements for you. Um, I had assumptions about quality. I had assumptions about punctuality. The trains have to run on time. I had to throw all that out the window in India. They do business a little bit differently. <laughs> so I had to learn that there's another way that Mother India does it. And, and maybe it's not less effective in the long run. And even if, I, even if the Swiss culture is more effective, and I think it is, actually. <laughs> I mean, the Swiss are the best clocks, the best banks, the best ski instructors. You know, it's, <laughs> it's really the best of everything. We make the best chocolate. Um, so we know how to run the world, basically. <laughs> um, but even the Swiss have to actually uh, accept the fact that there are other ways of doing things. And they might work in that particular culture. So that's what you have to do at this at this bottom level, you have to check your own assumptions, your own blind spots, and actually see what's important to you, what do I expect, and then to start looking at the relationship level, what's important to the other person. That's where you build trust. That's where this guardian stuff comes in. The guardian, <laughs> the business of being a guardian that uh, we heard about in the video, where you build a relationship. You, you ask the question, who are you? So if at this bottom level you ask the question, why? Why is this important to me? Why am I getting angry, et cetera? Here you're asking who? Who are you? Who are we? And you go out for a beer and you have a, if you can't, can't go out for a beer, you can still ask the question, right? What's important to you? Uh, what's your background? To actually to build the kind of relationship where you can do something great together. Because if you don't invest in your relationships, let's say you don't invest at this foundation, and you're, building a, you're basically building a relationship that's only this big, you can bu still build a pyramid, but it's going to be a tiny pyramid. Because it's built on a very, s very narrow foundation. So the bigger your foundation of relationship is, and I'm not talking about simply having 5,000 friends on Facebook. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger actually has, I just read today, he has 1.5 million uh, people on Twitter. That's cool, but I'm not sure they're really his friends. So I'm not talking about that kind of relationship. I'm talking about a relationship where, where if you and I were in the circus together and I would jump off the trapeze, I would know you're going to catch me. You have my back, as you guys say, right? And I have your back. I mean, that's the kind of relationship. Relationship that firemen have or relationship that soldiers have. That's relationship. Then you build the vision, and the vision has to be a shared vision. It's not good enough to have a vision and say, you know, we want democracy in the Middle East, which is a fantastic vision. 
I would support it. But if you don't have it be a shared vision and you, you impose it on, on your allies or your colleagues, that's not good enough. So the, the, the vision has to be shared. For example, when the Jürgen Schremp was the, the head of Daimler Chrysler, do you know that company? It doesn't exist anymore, actually, <laughs> which makes my point. <laughs> uh, you know, Jürgen Schremp came in and they invited him to a board meeting at the relationship level and he chose to go to South Africa to his ranch instead. He said, I have no time for the Chrysler people. Not a good idea. He took everybody, pretty much everybody off the joint management board of Daimler Chrysler. So there were 16 Germans on the management board and two Americans. Not a good idea. But we do it all the time also, right? We, we tend to throw off the Mexicans or whatever. So at the vision level, Daimler had this vision called Nur das Beste, which means only the best. Ha has ev anybody ever been in a Mercedes? You've been? Okay. Have you used the cup holders? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't actually work. I mean, the cup holder is not customer friendly, right? Have you noticed? But they, they make top quality. The customer is basically in the way of their quality process. If they didn't have customers, they could really do a great job of building those <laughs> automobiles, you know, but these damn customers are coming in. They're screwing up our process. So the vision is only the best. The Chrysler vision was very different. It was really about building cars that the, that the market wants, right? So you're, you're, you're trying to find out what the customer wants and you try to give it to them. That's why Chrysler came up with these weird cars. If you've ever looked at the Chrysler, it's pretty strange. They look like Dick Tracy, uh, you know, trick, uh, what do you call it, the comic strip cars. But that's what you have to do. You have to come up with a, with a common vision. You then come up with a shared strategy where you look at how are we going to do this, right? The strategy is basically not what do we want, which is the vision level, what, what do we want to be in five years? But at the strategy level, you're asking how do we get there? What is it going to cost? How much is it going to cost? Uh, what could go wrong? What's missing? What are the milestones? So basically the how, right? And then finally you go to the action. And you talk about, will you do this for me? You know, you make a request, you make a promise. I will, I will do X, Y, Z by 100 days from now. So you make powerful promises and powerful requests. That's what Churchill did in the Second World War, where we basically said, I promise you blood, sweat, and tears, and I'm asking everything of you, right? And people, people rose to the, to the request. Is this clear? I know I'm going really fast. <laughs>